Hello stylers and welcome back to the Full Style In channel for another video. Today we're going to be sewing with the pattern simplicity number 8550 View C. View C is the off the shoulder tunic with the ruffle sleeves but I'm going to elongate it to make it into a dress. And here is all the material and the fabric you would need. You're going to need a matching thread and nine buttons as well as some single bias tape. First thing first, we're gonna lay out all of our pattern pieces and we're gonna go through our instructions. Before we cut any of our pattern pieces, we're gonna go through our instructions and we're gonna highlight all of the pieces that we need to cut as well as all the instructions containing to the view that we will be working on. This is important to do before you start cutting away pattern pieces so that you are not confused with anything that you have to work on. Once we have done done that, we're gonna cut out all of our pattern pieces and then lay our pattern out onto our fabric and then we're gonna go and cut at our fabric. I did elongate um, the front and back pieces so that they will fit to um, about a dress on me. The pieces do come where they have a hemline for a dress, but I elongated that about five inches so that I have a little bit more room in the back. Starting at step number one, we're gonna make our darts in the front of our dress on piece number one um, with I'm going to take my tracing tool and just trace over the broken lines so I know um, where to pull in my darts and where to stop. I've already transferred all of my markings and notches onto my fabric. I'm going to take my pins and just pin that in place so that it's easier for me to follow that line once I get to my sewing machine. I'm going to back um, backstitch at the beginning, but I'm not going to backstitch at the end and this is going to be tapered off towards the edge of the fabric. I'm going to leave long tails so I'm able to trim away and secure this dart with a knot. Not too taut, but you want to make sure that it is firmly secured. And you're going to trim away any excess and then you're going to press your dart so that everything lays flat and you don't have any bulging or bubbles. Step number two, we are going to mark um, our plackets and front buttons. We're going to have the front edge inside along out of folds and I went and traced the um, line of that with my tracing tools and then I'm going to press that close so it's easy for me to do a basin stitch. So your fabric is facing um, wrong size down and you're going to turn it inside. Turn it over and then you're going to do a base stitch down the length of that. And this will become the area where you will be adding your um, buttons. So this is going to be folded over twice. And you're going to start 5 inches from the bottom. Moving on, we're going to use piece 15 or 20, depending on which view you're working on. And we're going to fold these right sides together lengthwise. And I'm going to press these so that it's easier for me to press these so it's easier for me to work with. We're going to do um, a stay stitch down the length of these, turn them right side out, press those again. And then we're going to match up the large dots. And, attach, and pin that to the right side of the front of the dress, which is piece one that we worked on earlier. If you have done that, you can sew your side seams together. And that's what you can see me here, attaching and lining up my notches and all of my um, dots, and I'm sewing the right sides together. I've already completed step number 21 off camera, which was to sew my sleeves, as well as to do a narrow 
Roland tuck him on the edges of my sleeve and I pressed all of those. I pressed and and I pressed all my seams. Now I am going to take my tracing rule tracing wheel again and mark where that bias tape should go. So the bias tape on the inside of the sleeve should go laying downwards on the lower edge and I'm going to pin that all the way around and then I'm going to do a stay stitch on the top and bottom edges of that bias tape and I'm going to leave a little bit at a gap towards the side seam of the sleeve. And then I'm going to cut my elastic, which is piece number 18, using my elastic guide. I'm going to take a safety pin and attach that to the end of the elastic so it's easier for me to feed through the elastic casing that we have created using the bias tape. And this is single, single fold bias tape. So I'm going to move and maneuver that elastic all the way through the guide. I'm going to safety pins the end together, try on the sleeve, see if I like the fit, it's not too tight, it's not too loose on where I will have this laying on my arm. And then I am going to remove the safety pin, trim away the excess, and then I'm going to do a cross stitch, um, by the, like an X stitch on the elastic so that it is firmly secure. And then I'm going to move that in place and then I'm going to finish and close off the bias tape so that I have a nice Moving on, we're going to be applying the interfacing. So step number 36, with wrong sides together, we're going to take piece 7, 8, and 9, and we're going to apply our interfacing. We're going to cut the pieces, the sizes that we need for those pieces, and then we're going to apply those. Wrong sides facing together. My interfacing, for some reason, likes to um, adhere to both sides of the interfacing. So I take a little bit of wax paper or parchment paper and I iron on top of that when applying. I don't use fabric or a towel to do so because it will stick to that. I'm going to attach with right sides facing together. I'm going to sew together pieces 7, 17, and 8. Trim away all of the raw edges and I'm going to do a simple roll and tuck hem to finish off the raw edges and trim all of my corners. Now taking the garment um, as it's sewn together and you're going to pin together the facing that you have created and you're going to pin that right sides together to the actual garment. Marking the, marking the center back in small dots and overlapping the front facing. and you will go back to create a understitch. Unfortunately, I missed a step. I did not show how I added the elastic, um, created the casing and elastic for the sleeves. There was, a, there was some confusion with the instructions, so I'm just gonna let past Nadia talk you through this process. together and then you take this and you fold it over that and then you turn it inside out. The 
raw edge of your interfacing is going to be showing. Pretend that's the corner. The raw edge of your interface is going to be showing. So, I don't want that. So, I'm going to take some advice that I got from... I can't remember her name right now, but I will leave her information on the screen. She folded this. She folded it like this. And so when she does her understitching, she's going to, she tucks this inside of there. So it hides all that. So that's what I'm going to do. I was having difficulties in um, figuring out how to make that work. The instructions make it really confusing because you're looking at it like that can't be right, that can't be right, but that's what the instructions say. So it has you thinking that you did something wrong when eh, the instructions not always clear. that and then I'm gonna go in to do my understitch and I'm going to fold this down fold that over and I'm going to tack it my understitch is only gonna be at the top and I'm gonna do that around my dress. So I can see what I'm doing. Cause I want to make this. I want to have this as clean as possible since this will be on outside of the garment. So I'm gonna try to get this seam as straight as possible. go ahead and create once they have done you can once that is all done you can fold over and go ahead and create what become the trim around the bust of your car bonus step here I use piece number number 13 to create straps because this is an off the shoulder off the shoulder garment of course I had to add straps um, first thing first I created some darts in the front and the back of this garment because of the sizing it was a bit loose on me around my bust area so I just created a half an inch to two inch darts in the front and the back and I'm gonna do the same method I used when creating the darts around the bust of the garment. I'm gonna start off back stitching at the beginning, but leave the tails long towards the end. And I'm going to secure that with a knot. And I'm gonna press that so that everything lays flat. By creating these darts, I add a little bit, um, I give myself the, I make things a little bit more secure at the top at the bust line as well as allow for the fabric to flare out so I still get the, the room that I get without taking away having to take in the sides. I'm going to take again piece number 15 and I'm going to cut this out on the fold twice. Right sides facing together, I'm going to do a simple stay stitch down the length of this, coming around the corner and um, closing off this tube. 
trimming away the excess with some pinky shears. This um, shirt and fabric frays like no one's business. I'm gonna turn these straps inside, right side out. And I'm gonna give them a firm pressing, closing off that raw edge. And I'm gonna attach them exactly where I put in the darts, which will line up perfectly with my bra straps. And I attach that using a simple stay stitch, um, stitch it in the ditch on the right side of the fabric so that it is easily concealed and hidden with the original seam that's there along the trimming. Moving on to the most difficult part, and that is creating the buttonholes. I went in using the buttonhole guide number 11, 19, 21. And I mark um, with a disappearing ink pen the buttonholes and the buttonholes where they should go and exactly where I would have the actual buttons. Using the buttonhole foot on my sewing machine and the buttonhole. It did take me a bit of practice on how to use this foot as well as how to use a stitch. But once you get the a hang of it, um, it will be no problem. You just have to play around with it. Try Use scrap fabric and not the fabric that you're working on when you're first handling this. And if you need be, look up any instructions. But the foot should do all of the work for you. Once you have sewn your buttonholes, I went in with some scissors and seam rippers and I trim away, um, opening up the buttonhole. I did go, you can go in with some fray check or um, some clear nail polish so that you can go ahead and seal those in so they don't fray. I'm going to use these beautiful buttons that I picked up here from Joann's. I'm going to use a simple needle and thread. And I'm going to attach and sew the buttonholes to where I marked it with that disappearing ink. And I go back and forth a few times until I feel that the button is secure. And then I'm going to cut um, away the excess and um, seal that in with a knot. And then you have to do that eight more times. This is a bonus add-on. I needed a little bit more length and a little bit more flair to the dress. So I took some scrap fabric and cut it um, six inches wide. And I just cut multiple pieces of the strips. And then I sewed them together, attaching them at their ends till they became one long strip. And then I gathered these strips creating a gathering ruffle effect. I hemmed, no. And then I hemmed these strips together so that I could have a nice clean edge. And then make sure that my dress is even and marked out correctly. I am gonna go ahead and I'm going to attach this ruffle detail about four inches from the bottom of my dress and then make sure everything is even out I'm going to attach this ruffle detail with um, right size together about three about two to three inches from the bottom of my dress which then I'm going to fold over and press down so that everything lays flat and then you not have a nice beautiful trim. A, then you have a nice beautiful ruffle detail towards the bottom of your dress to add a little bit more flair. And this is Stouters. This is the completed look. This dress took me a little longer than usual. It actually took me months. Um, at one point in time, we tried it on the fabric. Um, at actually the measurements were too small and there wasn't enough room to cover around my butt and my um, stomach. I of course removed all of that because I didn't want to make this video too long so I had to go back and get another two three yards of fabric but I'm so glad I stuck to it and finished this shirt dress. I absolutely love it. She's a cute, she's a beauty. I wore her out this past week 
to go to the Shedd Aquarium for Jazz Night. Um, it was the perfect summer, spring look. Um, this is the perfect look whether it's spring or like summer. Um, it's fun, it's flirty, it's chic. I absolutely adore her. She's cute. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to see more DIYs on a more frequent basis, please, please support Full Star Inc. on Patreon.com. Please show your love. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and share this video so more stylers and more individuals can find out more about the Full Star Inc. family. Thank you so very much for all your support and your love. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time.